We are a tiny dot in this universe, among the stars and other celestial bodies. Birth, life and death are constants not only for mankind and other creatures on Earth, but also for the million celestial bodies of the vast universe. We exist because the universe exists. But are we alone? Are we the only planet with life? Do we have an expiry date? The study of the universe through astrophysics and the quest for discovery is a very interesting and important subject for the existence of our planet. Through this journey, let us seek answers. The Indian Institute of Astrophysics is dedicated to research in astronomy, astrophysics and related fields. To begin with, I must tell you why should we study astronomy and astrophysics. Mankind started looking at the stars for their survival for two reasons, uh, to find time and also to find direction. If you want to go from one place to the other, you need to know the direction. Daytime sun guides you. In the night, you need to look up at the sky and know your stars to find out where you're going and how you're going. Especially regarding uh, navigation and uh, ocean, you don't have any direction, sense of direction. So people used to know their stars then, but things are different now. Who tells you the direction now? Of course you, you use GPS. But how does that work? There's a constellation of satellites that can position you and tell you where you are. But then, for the satellites to tell you where they are, they themselves need to look at quasars, which are very far away. Quasars are massive and extremely remote celestial bodies emitting large amounts of energy. They contain massive black holes. Their study is crucial to understanding the early universe. Astronomy and astrophysics is still relevant for the day-to-day -day life for everyone on Earth. So uh, the institute is, as it stands now as Indian Institute of Astrophysics, is 50 years old and we are embarking into the next half century of development and research. The institute began its journey as a Madras observatory in 1870s and there were several observations of the sun during the total solar eclipse. So therefore, a dedicated committee was assigned to set up an observatory in the southern part of India and Kodaikanal was identified as the site to establish. In the early part of the 1900s, observations started and still continue. And due to this, the institute has more than a century of photographs of the sun and they are available and digitized and people are using them to study the long-term variation of the sun as well as the solar phenomena. As we live with the sun, it is necessary to understand it for sustainability on Earth. The IIA has also branched out into nighttime astronomy in Kavalu, in the Javadi Hills of Tamil Nadu. So in 1971, Kodaikanal Observatory became Indian Institute of Astrophysics with its headquarters in Bangalore. Because of the advantage of the location, we can observe southern and the northern objects at Kavalu. So at Kavalu, we have indigenously built a 2.3 meter telescope, which got commissioned in 1986 as a national facility. So at observatory, we have various kinds of studies, ranging from solar system objects, variable stars, galaxies, novae, supernovae, and other uh, topics. Similarly, students also will be trained uh, for doing their project 
as part of their coursework. In the early 90s, it was very strongly felt that you know, we need a new observatory uh, because the light pollution around Kavalur was increasing, the village was expanding, and also the number of clear nights were decreasing because of the change in the weather globally. So in the early 90s, um, we set out to look for uh, new sites in the Himalayan range, and that is how the site in Hanle was um, identified. In 1996, it was decided that Hanle was the best site for an observatory. The cloudless skies and the low atmospheric water vapor make it one of the best sites in the world. Situated at 14,800 feet, the site is deemed to be excellent for visible, infrared, sub-millimeter and millimeter wavelengths. The HCT is remotely operated from CREST, the Centre for Research in Education and Science and Technology, Bangalore. Because of the remoteness of the place, there was, uh, you know, the connectivity was, uh, was a big problem. So now what is that, this telescope which is in Hanle, uh, it, it has all set up with all instrument and all, and we have a small uh, setup of computers here, so both, both are networked with satellite. So we wanted to do it in such a manner that we could actually observe remotely. People, the observer could sit right here in the comfort of a place like Bangalore, but still observe from an excellent site like um, Handley. This wouldn't be possible without the help of telescopes. Telescopes have come a long way. From 1608, when an instrument was invented to see faraway things as if they were nearby, to the versatile Hubble Space Telescope, with the help of which we can see stars being born and dying. Today, scientists are working on a 30-meter telescope that will be capable of maybe detecting extraterrestrial life. Currently, we have some 2-meter class telescopes, and then going to 30-meter telescope is like a quantum jump for India. The 30-meter uh, telescope, uh, as the name itself uh, suggests, it is, uh, it is a very large telescope with a primary mirror which is 30 meters in diameter. And because it is such a large mirror, you cannot have a single mirror of that size. So it is made up of several segments. Uh, in fact, it is made up of 492 segments. Each segment is a hexagon of a uh, size of 1.44 meters. Each segment is mounted on its support system and uh, all these segments are aligned together to behave like a single mirror of 30 meter diameter. These specialities have been continuously strengthened with the significant support of the Department of Science and Technology, which makes the Indian Institute of Astrophysics a world-class organization of the nation. The Department of Science and Technology is completing 50 glorious years in the service of the nation through science and technology. This journey of relevance and excellence has not been a solitary one. All our autonomous organizations have played a critical role in driving forth with quality and focus and speed in their respective areas. They have excelled in their pursuits I wish all the autonomous organizations and their scientists a very successful future. The future is coming at us at faster and faster speeds. I'm sure you'll be fully prepared to meet the challenges and create new opportunities and work for an Atmanirbhar Bharat that can be proud of its s depth and spread.